much. Uh, well, uh, good morning. I have to take the floor in this occasion, but this paper will not be possible without Dr. Miguel Carrero, a researcher from the University of Santiago and a specialist in LIDAR analysis applied to the Neolithic tombs. It was impossible for him to participate here, so I will uh, read the whole, the, the whole text of this uh, presentation. LIDA and their analysis is not my research work, so I apologize in advance if there is any mistake in my text or in my presentation. If you have any queries in this particular field, um, you can write to my colleague as well. This line of research uh, has been funded by the Valdez Salas Foundation institution, which has a special interest in these uh, archaeological remains. The aim of this paper is to compare the accuracy of LIDAR for measuring prehistoric tombs, in particular, the barrows of or megalith megalithic uh, tombs of the Salas Council in Asturias, uh, northwest of Spain. Um, unfortunately, uh, they are not the terrific tombs of ancient Greece, <laughs> you will see. So, uh, well, two cemeteries and around 18 structures are involved in this paper made with information provided by LIDA. Uh, our starting point is the database from the Saitse Monument record carried out in 1990. Our efforts <coughs> sorry, uh, were focused on the barrows that in this area conserve Neolithic and Bronze Age chronologies between the 4300 and uh, the 2500 BC approximately. The prehistoric structures were grouped in 17th uh, cemeteries, gathering together around uh, 77 structures. Our project tries uh, to complete all the updating of the uh, Sites and Monument Records database, That's, that is uh, very old. The last update of the database uh, was to scan all the information and convert to PDF its site record. Uh, there is no money or projects for updating the archaeological records at uh, other levels. That would be the only way to know uh, the damaged or destroyed uh, structures or, or to add GPS locations to the sites and monument records. Um, um, we are doing now this work in Salas in short steps and only uh, for the barrows because we cannot assume all the um, inventory from the Paleolithic to the Medieval Age. Even the Neolithic Bronze Age catalog is an enormous effort. LIDAR analysis was carried out using the free data available through the National Geographical uh, Institute in Spain. After applying the LIDAR uh, analysis to all these uh, spaces, the results were checked uh, with field works with the aim <coughs> to contrast the accuracy of these results. The final step was to gather all the information and to do the analysis to get uh, some results. But uh, firstly, it's necessary to summarize the main problems that uh, we had to deal with in the research and why LIDA is so important for the analysis. In Asturias, as it happens in other areas of Iberia, like Galicia, or even in European uh, countries like uh, Poland, we are measuring uh, structures in the middle uh, of the forest. Uh, in some ways, a uh, good land, uh, land archaeology as well. It should be remembered <coughs> that almost uh, 30 years have passed from the first uh, field works and extensive trees plantations were carried out along uh, these decades in our area of uh, study. These plantations required more infrastructure, thus uh, the old tracks and roads were expanded to give a pass to the heavy machinery affecting to the archaeological sites. Uh, the cemetery of San Juan, for instance, could be an example of what happens when this technique uh, is applied in the Asturian megalithism. Because LIDA in San Juan allows quite identifications, identifications of the position of the tumulus. This axiom uh, seems 
um, simple process but in uh, if we sum the dense vegetation with other affections to the structure the identifications of burrows in Asturias is not uh, so simple that's the case of burrow uh, number two of the cemetery close uh, by a small row that divided the structure into two parts the right part was easier to identify but it was not the case in the left part because only 20 centimeters uh, of the prehistoric barrow remains in its original position with less damage although barrow 4 was partially affected by a plantation of trees but you can see in both photos of San Juan barrows 1 and 4 the situation of the tombs in the middle of the forest in most cases they are covered by dense uh, vegetation. Another group of barrows, considered as Hidarga's cemetery, show us the second problem in the updating works. Some barrows are partially destroyed. <coughs> At this site, four clear barrows were identified in 1990. You are seeing now the original structure numbered as four at the top part on the left uh, image. However, only two appear currently in the LIDAR. In one case, the barrow only can be seen using LIDAR because in the field it almost disappeared <coughs> after extensive agricultural levelings of this terrain, as we can see on the slide. The other two barrows that were part of the site's monument record database, which include a total of four, can hardly be recognized now, <coughs> probably due to a similar process of uh, levelling. You can see both structures very close to the number here. Uh, below we will see that uh, when LIDA uh, shows small information about the tumulus and its limits, this situation obviously uh, affects the measures that we take uh, with this tool. They are not so precise. <coughs> now let's take a look in detail the methods applying this particular research of the project. The first step, uh, using the LIDA for measuring the structures. Second, Compare the measures with the data uh, from the sites and monuments record. We use the measures from these field works uh, rather than our own measures um, because in 1990 most part of the barrows are clean of uh, vegetation. For this reason, most of the necessary measures are more accurate than our current uh, measures. In our research now, we always have to deal with barrows that are incomplete, partially destroyed or, or totally covered with dense vegetation. Finally, we have to contrast both data to carry out the analysis and obtain uh, some results. For measuring the main axis uh, of the barrow, uh, QGS uh, was used, in particular with the profile tool. The height of the barrow is the result of calculating the difference between the lowest altitude of the barrow and the highest. The image from the resample, resampling filter emphasizes the detail of the terrain and the tumulus, and for this reason it was used uh, for the measuring. In order to obtain the volumes and the areas, it was necessary to apply the same calculates than a Spanish archaeologist, Aguileta Franco, used for their dissertation about the barrows in the landscape of the Baixa Limia <coughs> in Galicia near, near Portugal. Portugal. Um, following to Aguileta, the total area can be estimated with the for formula of multiplying A by B, in other words, after multiplying both main axes, north-south and east-west. Uh, this, formula, this formula is not totally precise because it does not correct the irregularities of the structures. Regarding the volume, the formula that we use is based again in Aguileta, where B is the total vol volume of the monument 
AH is the highest attitude of the cumulus, uh, R is the average radius due to the irregularities of the <coughs> diameters perceived in most of the cumulus of Galicia, Egileta uses this formula in order to resolve the problem. Thus, the um, anom anomalies between the radius are estimated using an average value between the two radios, radius. Following these uh, steps, the radius will be always half of the larger diameter and the minor diameter, respectively. It's a single way to do the calculations, but the system works in this area. There is now a PhD student uh, working in Galicia in a formula to convert all these uh, steps in an automatic process, but until this moment we have to use uh, our system. After these calculations, a table can be obtained combining the dimensions gathered during the sites and monument records in red with the new measures obtained with LIDAR in black. You are seeing now on the slide information about San Juan. Um, I will not detain you with this uh, these uh, general data because it's more interesting to jump to some preliminary conclusions. For example, it's necessary to point out uh, that in San Juan, uh, in one of the barrows, uh, the measure from light that is more precise in others, like barrow number five of La Cobertoria, the figure for the height is more accurate in the sites and monument records, although in this cumulus there are small differences between the different measuring LIDA and sites and monument records. In barrow 4, both numbers show very similar figures. And finally, the barrow number 6, uh, in which the difference never reaches uh, a meter. Only 20 uh, centimeters indicates that light that could be reliable to do this kind of, uh, uh, of measuring. At least uh, it's, um, it's uh, um, very accurate and, and uh, it's very comparable with uh, human uh, measures. It's important to remark that the accuracy of the measures can be checked thanks to the information provided by our field notes, uh, as well as using the comparison between the different structures and the most reliable measures of some of them. That's the case, for example, of barrel number five in San Juan that was measured with the total station during the excavations. You are seeing now on the slide the same kind of table, but on this, on this occasion with information gathered about the Penausen site. Um, in this case, it's with more structures, uh, we have uh, 12 uh, barrows, although the number eight was destroyed during the construction of our road. Um, in this case, it's crucial to uh, stress that LIDA obtain more precise and coherent measures for six structures of the symmetry, as you can see on the slide. Uh, however, in two barrows, the information was not so precise. Um, most of this inaccuracy comes from the information available in the digital terrain model. The borders of the tumulus, in some cases, uh, cannot be clearly identified. identified. In Penausen, this situation happens in two prehistoric tombs, number one and two. The topography of this area is very confusing uh, because there is a little elevation in this site uh, and two structures are very close between them, making it hard to identify the limits um, of each uh, tomb, as you can see on the slide now. Moreover, the trench dug during the excavations in 1976 is not helpful either. You can see here very clear, I think. Uh, well, when the barrows were built isolated and with very clear borders, the LIDAR works uh, with more accuracy as it happens in the barrows 3 to 4. Finally, and as regards, 
Finally, in as regards the volumes and areas, there are plenty of data provided by LIDA. In the case of San Juan, the information can be grouped into three categories according to the volumes obtained. With La Cubertoria number five, uh, as the most remar remarkable structure, as you can see on the slide, thanks to the 3D model made with a drone top part. However, um, Penausen provides interesting accounts about the volumes and we, uh, with other three very well-defined types uh, based on the results obtained, especially in the types 1 and 3, we can suggest that the volumes of the, the structures can be connected with the evolution of the symmetry along the time and perhaps with the linkages between the different people buried uh, there. It's very uh, it's very common in the Asturian cemeteries of this age the presence of main tombs with other secondary secondary burials in the surroundings of the mound. That could be also the case of Penausen. At least the barrows one, three, and five show remarkable volumes and serve as a main axis for the cemetery. In the middle. In the middle of these uh, big structures, two secondary tombs were built. Barrows number two in close, in close connection with number one and barrow number four uh, linked perhaps with the number five. Uh, to sum up, and although further analysis is yet necessary for some areas, we can assure that uh, LIDAR techniques um, as our paper has shown, can obtain crucial results when revising our records, at least in, in this area of in the northwest of Spain. Uh, six groups of measures obtained with LIDA in Penausen and one in San Juan have proved to be more reliable than the sites coming from the sites and monument records field works in 1990. Three of the structures measured with LIDA in San Juan shows remarkable coincidences with the sites and monuments records uh, numbers. Record numbers. Um, LIDA has been proven as less accurate in, monu in monuments where the topography doesn't help, where the tumulus is partially destroyed, or when the borders are not totally clear, as it happens in, Pen in Penausen, three, three examples, and San Juan, uh, two examples. A final remark that, that is always uh, necessary, check the information provided by LIDA with intense field working to minimize the mistakes of uh, the technique. Um, that's uh, all. Thank you for your att attention.